Bulgaria's capital, Sofia, isn't just about its monuments and impressive buildings, even though it has its share of these. What made the city really come to life for me was taking in the details. Enjoying its lively streets, learning about its history, seeing the people playing chess in the park. Sofia doesn't get a lot of hype, but it's a city that really grew on me. I stayed for four days, and here's what I found. I am in Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria, and I'm excited to explore. I know that for a lot of people, the city or the country in general are not top bucket list destinations. I think they're a bit off the radar for a lot of people, but that is also why I'm here. I love going to under high places and seeing what they're really like. This is my first morning and I haven't even really done any proper tourist sightseeing yet and I'm already loving it. This neighborhood is near my hotel and it's really wonderful to explore. There's all these cute little shops. Uh, there's a ton of street art, beautiful street art. I mean, look at this. There you go. You never know what's around the next corner. I later learned that I'd found a neighborhood informally known as the Art Quarter or Quartal. It has tons of street art, fun little shops and cafes. There's this trendy bakery called N Bread where you can find all sorts of creative little treats. I later found a board game cafe that serves various kinds of homemade mead. And you gotta love this adorable book exchange. But especially there is lots of street art. What a wonderfully inclusive message. That's right, all moms are meals. So I typed in attractions on Google Maps and uh, one of the pins was a tree that looks like a hand. Now that does look like a hand. Looks like a hand. I love doing some unplanned exploration and actually my whole Bulgaria trip will be kind of in this spirit. So this trip is a bit different from previous ones that I've done. Uh, usually I kind of research quite a bit nowadays, especially when I'm doing content uh, like these videos. Uh, but in this case, I just saw a direct flight from Lisbon, where I live, to Sofia, which I think is a new connection. And I thought, great, that's an excellent opportunity to go here. But yeah, uh, this is a bit more of a spontaneous trip. So uh, to any Bulgarians watching this, I hope you don't have to fact check me too much during this video because I only started reading about your country a couple of days ago. This can actually be a great way to travel. Unburdened by expectations, just seeing what places are like. That said, I should mention that Sofia is mostly a modern city. If you're looking for many charming historical streets, then you'll probably want to visit another Bulgarian city, Plovdiv. But if you can lean into Sofia's occasionally grungy aesthetic and acknowledge maybe a few architectural hangovers from the communist era, then you can discover so many interesting things when exploring Sofia. Let me show you my favorite thing that I did in Sofia. Something that I thought was really unique. At the Red Flat, you are taken back in time to communist Bulgaria. But this is not a museum, but an immersive experience. This apartment is kept just as it would have looked like in the 1980s, showing what life was like for ordinary Bulgarians during the Cold War. And this is such a good way of letting you feel the history. The 
audio guide is amazing, telling you the story of one fictional but representative family, giving you a true sense of what the time period was like at a human level. The coolest thing is that you can touch and examine everything. It feels vaguely like being in an escape room, but without the puzzles. That was fascinating. Uh, you get a really tangible look at what life was like under communism in Bulgaria. And actually literally tangible because you can mess around you can look in the cupboards it's very tactile and uh it it's a very immersive experience it takes about 90 minutes i highly recommend it uh for me it's really interesting because i'm half polish and the furniture in there actually really reminds me of the furniture that my grandparents had in poland and uh the audio tour is fantastic because every little uh, audio track will give you a snippet, a little, little vignette of what life was like, what kind of music people were listening to, uh, what they would do for fun, what, what tourism was like under communism, uh, and of course what the political system was and so on. But really it's about regular daily life for people during this time and that makes it really, really interesting. So if you come out of the metro station right there, then you end up here at the Serdica archaeological site. So Serdica is the name of the Roman city that was here before, long before it became Sofia. So all of these walls are part of the ancient city and I love that they've made this part of the public square here. Uh, you can just walk around here, look at the different plaques uh, and they have something very cool if you scan a QR code you get an AR app on your phone and then you can actually just go around and see representations of what the buildings might have looked like. It clearly enhanced things here a little bit I mean that is ancient but that is clearly not but that's okay it helps us imagine and visualize a little bit more where these buildings really were. Hidden in the courtyard of the presidential palace is the Church of St. George, which was built in the 4th century as part of Serdica and is worth checking out. It has some beautiful frescoes inside, but I can't show this as cameras were not allowed inside. Something I strangely didn't see mentioned in blogs about Sofia is the archaeological museum. It is really awesome. It's housed in a former mosque and shows incredible artifacts from Bulgaria's history from the Neolithic era up to Ottoman times. I was especially impressed by the Thracian treasures, which included this incredibly lifelike and dynamic head of a Thracian king. Okay, so that's a cool museum, uh, lots of artifacts. Maybe not so much context, there isn't really a timeline of Bulgarian history or anything like that, but uh, the objects are very beautiful. And there are many even from the time of the Thracians, so before the Romans, so there's uh, some really, really old ancient objects here. Actually, for more of a historical overview, it's worth going here. The National History Museum of Bulgaria is a bit strangely located. When you get here at first, you're like, where am I? Because it's not in the center. It's all the way to the south, next to the ring road of Sofia. And uh, yeah, you see this 1970s looking building and um, maybe it isn't the most inviting at first, but once you go inside, it is actually a beautiful building and it's a good museum. It has exhibits for every time period in Bulgarian history. If you're into museums, then probably you'll really like this. If not, then maybe it's a little bit of a detour. 
However, there is also another site, the Boyana Church, not too far away from here. So you can actually combine those things on one visit. So what you're seeing behind me is the St. Alexander Nevsky Church, which is the most iconic building in Sofia. So this is a clearly a fine example of an Orthodox church with these beautiful golden domes. Uh, it's also the seat of the a Bulgarian Orthodox Church. Uh, the Orthodox Church works a little bit differently than Catholic. Uh, the Catholics have a Pope, one Pope to rule them all, and that's not the case with the Orthodox Church. They have many different independent uh, kind of regions. They all have their own patriarch. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Bulgarian Orthodox Church was actually uh, the first to kind of split off, and they did so uh, during the medieval times. So they went off to do their own thing, uh, now all the uh, uh, Orthodox churches do recognize each other and they say, look, we're all part of the same thing, but there's not one guy at the top of it, like calling the shots or anything. So yeah, this is basically a cathedral because this is where the patriarch of the uh, Bulgarian Orthodox Church has its seat. The interior is beautifully decorated in a neo-Byzantine style. And I love how stylized Byzantine religious art usually is. The church is really beautiful and also when its bells start chiming, it goes pretty hard. Sofia is also a great base for day trips. Deep in the Rila mountains is the ancient Rila monastery. It's about 90 minutes from Sofia, but there are many tourist shuttles that can take you there, often in combination with some other sites. The Rila monastery is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it is uh, still used as a monastery. So you can visit, but you have to be respectful in various ways cover your knees, cover your shoulders, that kind of thing. And the uh, central church here you cannot film in. It's very beautiful on the inside. Lots of gold, lots of frescoes. On the outside you see loads of frescoes as well. Absolutely gorgeous. So detailed. This monastery has been around for a while. Uh, it was founded in the 10th century. But the buildings we see here, uh, they were built in the 19th century. A big fire occurred uh, in the 19th century and then uh, they got a whole bunch of people to uh, don donate money and rebuild it. And this is what we see today. And uh, they say it's built as a fortress. So you have these huge walls and two gates from which you can enter and exit. This is definitely one of those places you really want to take in and look at all the details. Okay, these frescoes are nuts. A little overwhelming, look. <laughs> There's a lot of depictions of, I guess, hell, and I'm not sure what. Look at these guys. These devil creatures. Sofia is quite a green city with several huge parks that almost feel like forests. This is where I happily escaped on a hot afternoon when it was 36 degrees Celsius. On the edge of the city is the Vitosha mountain range. And on my last day, I decided to climb it all the way up to the Boyana waterfall. All 
Alright, randomly there's some pond or reservoir here. And there's such a cacophony of frogs. It's always creepy. <laughs> Suddenly, the frogs fell silent again. Another hiker tried to provoke them by making frog noises, but to no avail. I guess they were done arguing. Even though Sofia is a huge city with over a million inhabitants, it's amazing how easy it is to escape it. This was a pretty chewy hike though, especially since I'd done another big hike just the previous day. This is actually a tough hike. I only recommend this if you have the energy. I was getting a little worried that it wasn't going to be worth it just on the last like half hour or so. But when I got here, I did say wow. Alright, that's it for Sofia, but I have traveled in many other places in Bulgaria, so if you want to see that video, be sure to click the video wherever it pops up, and we'll continue the journey.